Bonjour, everyone. Hi, this is Neshi Lokat. Welcome to Star Nation's organization's main fan page, where I do a daily live stream around the divination cards or the oracle cards that I use um, to find out what's most important uh, for us to know about for today, the energy that's flowing for the day. Um, that card leads to a spiritual conversation, or sometimes I joke around and say, or conversation about spirit, right? <laughs> But anyway, welcome. Today is Sunday, February 10th, and um, it is a snowy, blowy day here in Toma, Wisconsin, where I live. Um, I'm about uh, an hour east of the Mississippi, and uh, it's uh, the, we have travel advisories out and all kinds of stuff. We're supposed to have like four inches of snow. I don't know. Uh, it's been snowing since mid-morning, and it's still going strong, so we might actually end up with more than four inches, I'm thinking. I don't know. We'll have to wait and find out at the end of the day when it's supposed to end. So let's see. Um, before we get rolling with any information or chat, um, I'm going to like and share the broadcast, the live stream um, on my cell phone. And um, I'm just going to find it. And I'm going to share it over to my personal news feed. There we go. I'm going to change that to the news feed. And just as a hint, never put hand lotion on before you do stuff on your phone. <laughs> it makes it really slippery. Oh, my gosh. The other thing is and never do it before you have to open a door either. I've done that on more than one occasion. All right, so I'm going to send it over to my friends and asking them to... Um, please join me. Yeah, I'm going to put actually put that in there for a spiritual conversation. There you go. I'm going to post that. There. <laughs> my my phone is so slow. My hands it was almost slipping through my hands. Yikes. Don't drop the phone. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I should have put this hand lotion on like 10 or 15 minutes before I started the broadcast is what I should have done. All right. Let's see who's in the chat so far. We have Valerie. Valerie. Hello, Valerie. It's good to have you here. Uh, always good to have you in the house. And Julie Shumway Hills here too. Hello, Julie. And Rochelle. Ah, can't make it today, but you're already here. <laughs> So glad you could just pop in and let us know that, Rochelle. Thank you so much. Pat's here too. Good afternoon, Pat. Good to have you here. And namaste to you too, Rochelle. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so, you know, Rochelle, Rochelle, Rochelle's been here to uh, Star Nations Academy. She was here for a class. So we we're able to actually see each other in person again. Um, and to be able to, you know, that's always so nice, isn't it? You know, we get to know each other through um, this venue um, online and that sort of thing. But to be in actual presence with each other, that's kind of special too. So I'm coming over to Michigan in May, May 18th weekend, um, teaching a drum making workshop. I haven't taught a drum making workshop over in Michigan in I think three years, maybe even four. Um, when my mom was... Um, yeah, you know, when she was her her pain with her arthritis was really starting to get pretty bad. I just didn't do much traveling anymore, and so um, one of my brothers is going to be here with her that weekend, and so I get to go over to Michigan. I get to see some people in person, yay! And so um, I think we have one more slot left in in that workshop, that particular workshop. Um, and it's being held in Lyons, Michigan at Minnie Kansman's home. And Minnie Kansman and I, we, we're the stars. We've known each other for, gosh, since 2001, I think. I think it could have been 2002. Um, and so it's been, we've known each other for a really long time. And uh, yeah, and so we host each other, have always hosted each other um, for our classes that we teach. And now that we I have Star Nations um, and Star Nations Academy, we both teach through the academy. And so um, if you're able to join us, you know, let, let us know. We have, like I said, one more, one more slot to fill and then it will be full. We can start a waiting list. And um, I do have another workshop here, drum making workshop here. I want to say that's in the fall. 
I don't have that information in front of me. Julie, do you, do you happen to have um, that information available? Um, yeah, I can't remember what month it's in. I know it's in the fall um, here in Wisconsin. Um, I try to hold one uh, drum making um, here in Wisconsin and one in Michigan um, when I was teaching full time, uh, at least twice a year. And so this one is once in the spring and once in the fall. I also have another class coming up, um, a journey to remembering, that's what I'm calling it. Um, and that's in March and it's here at Star Nations Academy in Toma, Wisconsin. It's all about um, remembering what it's like to be in your heart. And uh, we'll be working on aspects of that and also helping you with the um, activation of your Merkaba. Yeah. Yeah. So we're going to be working on that in March. Um, that is the weekend of the 21st. Um, it's a full weekend, Friday night through um, Sunday late afternoon. And so, um, yeah, you can check it out at our website at starnations.org at the Academy uh, page. And it's got all of that good information there. Okay. All right. So <clears throat> sorry about that. You know, usually I don't do that kind of um, promotion. I usually do that at the very end. But I was talking about seeing each other in person. All right. So um, what, what did we do this morning? We had a very busy morning uh, for a Sunday. Um, yeah, we published the Star Nations magazine, the February edition. And that takes me mm, about an hour and a half or so, um, sometimes two hours, depending on how many interruptions I get. Um, and and uh, so publishing day is always so much fun here. You know, and it's not, it's... Um, it's a, the, the culmination, right, of a very creative process. And so we look forward, I look forward to the 10th of every month when we do that, the, the actual publishing. And it's more than just pressing a button. It is pressing a button, but it's more than that. Yeah, it's, um, it's doing all the promotional work and all of that. But there is a sense of um, accomplishment and gratitude and... Um, yeah, and sometimes um, anticipation, because <laughs> there, there's been times when we've been going, closing our eyes and hitting the button, hoping it works, you know, yeah, that kind of thing. Um, because with the testing that we do, sometimes we run into a little glitchy thing and we think we have it fixed and we don't know for sure until it's live. And so, but this month it was really, really smooth. And uh, yeah, so it was, it was good. Um, I'm going to do a little bit of a... Um, um, a sharing on Tuesday night about the magazine. So we'll do that stuff there. Yeah, there we go. Uh-huh. Hey, Stephanie is in the house. I think that's Stephanie. Looks like it. Yes, it is. <laughs> she's she's uh, promoting the magazine. Yeah, I know. good. Thank you, Julie. She says, drum making in Wisconsin is fall, August 17th. Yeah, well, late summer, late summer, right? Uh, August 17th. Now I remember. Now I remember. That's my that would have been my dad's birthday. He would have been, let's see, mom's a hundred would will be a hundred in June. He would have been ninety-seven. He would have been ninety-seven. Yeah, he was born born on August 17th. Yeah. So yeah. So anyway, dad, obviously dad will be around, huh? <laughs> the spirit the spirit that I call dad will be here um for for that special day. Um, yeah, well, thank you, Julie, for, for sharing. I, I knew that it was like in the fall. I just couldn't remember what, uh, what month. Okay. So <clears throat> the card draw for those people who may be joining us and don't know, you know, exactly what this live stream is all about. Um, back in May of 2018, I had started doing a live stream um, all around the card draw that I do in the mornings. And I've been doing that kind of card draw for years, years and years and years. Um, it was something that I did for myself um, just to see what kind of energy was flowing on that particular day, kind of like giving the heads up, right? Um, and I started um, using that card draw and uh, doing a um, quote on our business account at Instagram for Star Nations. And then in May, um, <laughs> my spiritual team gave me this brilliant idea to do this daily live stream based on that card draw. And so we've been doing this since um, the beginning of May. I think it was May 5th. 
and uh and so yeah yeah so it's been quite a few months quite a few months are coming up on a year um and so almost every day we've had i've had a live stream now um there have been times when i've had to take off because of business um or because you know like george was sick or my mom was sick or something like that i haven't been knock on wood right knock on wood um paul was sick he had pneumonia once and and uh yeah and so taking care of the the sick ones right um we're the only times i've actually taken um some time um not to have a live stream we've been through i think four maybe five different decks and this current deck that we're using is called the animal druid oracle and it's by philip and stephanie uh cargome illustrated by bill worthington yeah copyright on this is 1996 and i have to tell you you know i'm learning a lot um a lot from the druid point of view that perspective um and i'm also learning a bits and pieces of the gaelic um language <laughs> Because the animal, the animal um, comes with their the English um, name and also the Gaelic name. And thank goodness they have a pronunciation guide in the book, <laughs> because otherwise, oh my goodness, that would that I wouldn't be able to do it. I wouldn't and do it correctly anyway. Um, yeah. All right. And so we have. I'm just checking the the chat. All right. Thank you, Stephanie, for, for putting the, the workshop information in there. Um, and so this is the card deck. Um, I think you'll find uh, the information fascinating, number one. And it really does spark. Spark is a good word for it. Um, interesting conversations here. We've had a few since um, we started using this deck, which was on February 1st, on Bridget's Day. Um, and so, uh, yeah, let me show you what card came today. This one, Raven, 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 um, the Gaelic word for Raven is Bran, B-R-A-N, Bran. I'm going to bring it a little bit closer and start at the top. Um, a tree that has a couple of leaves that haven't fallen yet. Um, in the background, you have a, um, a hill or a bluff. Uh, and then we start looking at the raven. And I don't, let's see if I can get the, on the hill, there's um, pathways. There's a path going up the hill. And of course, there's the raven. We'll come back to him in a second. Over here, there is, it looks like a uh, acorn on the tree. And we have water in the background. And Raven is sitting on a limb with his back toward us. Yeah. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous raven. You know, black is is hard to paint with, hard to because it's um, it, it doesn't show a lot of relief, and so the artist, my goodness, did such a good job on this. Yeah. Now I'm going to show you this. There's something if I can get the the camera. To focus do you see that on his tail feather i can't see notice what that is at first i thought it was a drop of water but where did it come from yeah very interesting and they got tree roots or kind of something some sort of roots down below there along the shoreline Yeah, Raven. You know, <clears throat> before I even read what was uh, in the book, I kind of sat with this a bit. And um, 
was thinking to myself, you know, what do I know about Raven, right? What do I know about Raven without looking it up? A Raven gets, I think we confuse the Raven many times with Crow because when they're not standing side by side, we they look a, a lot alike. Um, for me, the only difference really from eyesight, right, from my physical eyesight is um, their size, is their size. Um, you know, and Raven, Raven has, um, he cuts across almost a lot, a lot of indigenous cultures. He really does. You'll find him up in the Northwest, um, here in the States. Um, and also with the, uh, in Alaska with the, uh, indigenous people over there. Um, you know, they, Raven sits on the, their totem poles on the very top of their totem poles. You'll always find Raven there. Yeah. And then as you move further across the United States, you know, um, is where the confusion starts between the crow and the raven until you get to the East Coast. <laughs> and then then on the East Coast, you're, 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 um, there's a lot of European influence with um, the Wicca or Wiccan. And so, you know, um, distinguishing between the crow and the raven within that culture. And, uh, and so it's, I just found it very fascinating to, to, to think about it that way. And then when we go across the ocean and we get to Europe um, and, and to think about how Raven is seen on that continent, right? Yeah, Raven, Raven cuts across a lot of cultural beliefs. And uh, I find it fascinating, you know, that Raven is a messenger, right? Um, um, a lot of about initiation and, um, oh my gosh, ending up in a lot of poems too, you know, Edgar Allan Poe, right? Um, and those kinds of things. Yeah. Um, and so that's what I was thinking about Raven, Raven. And when you have the Raven feather, um, can, when you're comparing it to a, a crow feather, their feathers are so much bar bigger. And, um, yeah, I was just going to say, if you have a, a feather that is up from one of your power animals in a bird, um, many times you'll feel the energy almost quivering in the feather, um, vibrating, right, in your hand. Because not everybody feels that. Not everyone feels that. If it's a power animal for, animal for you, um, chances are you'll, you'll feel that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Hey, Don Nelson's here. Hello, Don. Good to have you here. Good afternoon to you, too. Let me grab a drink of water here. We had, um, I don't know, maybe it is brunch, but it was really a late lunch. So what is that? <laughs> um, we had breakfast for lunch. Did you ever do that? A meal that's not breakfast you have um, at lunchtime or at supper time. We do that every every so often here. Um, the other the other evening we had pancakes. Uh, no, I'm sorry. I take that back. Oh, I made waffles, um, just to have some homemade um, uh, maple syrup. You know the real stuff. <laughs> and and this afternoon Paul made um, I don't know. It was kind of like a skillet kind of breakfast hash browns and eggs and all mixed up into one pan. It was really good, but filling and a little thirsty too, a little, a little salty. So anyway, um, Raven, Raven, Raven. Um, this is the card that was drawn for those people just joining us. Raven. The Gaelic word for Raven is brawn, B-R-A-N. And we we're just kind of going over what we see in in the photo in the card about the the branches of a tree, and we have a few leaves that haven't fallen off. Um, we have a hill in the background, and to me, it kind of like looks like there's snow on it too, and patches. Um, there's a pathway heading up the hill from the water line. Um, looks like there's a water. Uh, I'm assuming it's a river, but it could be a lake. 
course, and then there's the raven. We'll come back to him for a second. And in the corner over here, or on the side, I should say, is it looks like an acorn to me on, on a tree limb. And then we have a root system below the raven, right? And then we have the raven. This is back to us and looking to his left. And I noticed that there is this one piece down here by his tail feather. Um, it looks like a drop of water maybe. But it's interesting that it would just be on just one single drop, whatever that is, right? And he's sitting on a branch. So, you know, we could say that he's grounded, right? He's grounded to the earth plane because he's not in flight. Hmm. Let's see what Philip has to say about the, um, the raven. Um, the words that he uses on the card is healing, initiation, and protection. Isn't that interesting? Yesterday we had otter for the second time, right? And with otter, otter also had protection. Just, I'm just pointing it out. It's very interesting. No coincidences, right? All right. So the card, the card shows a raven perched on the bare winter branches of a beech tree. Of a beech tree that grows beside an ancient mound. This is the white mount in which is buried the head of Braun the Blessed and on which in later times will be raised the Tower of London. So this, this mount in the back, this mountain in the back, um, was, was there long before the Tower of London, long before London. And that's where the Tower of London will, will be built. Hmm. You know, looking at the at the raven, um, looking to his left. In in some interpretations, um, looking to the left or coming from the left is about um, the past. It's about the past, and when you're looking to the right, to the right, it's about the future. When you're looking straight on, it's about the present. Right. And so um, what is the raven looking toward the past about? Yeah, that's a good question, I think. Um, the author goes on to say that Braun offers initiation, protection, and the gift of prophecy. What is meant by initiation in practice may be as formal as actually undergoing an initiation ceremony or as informal as, for example, being initiated into the mysteries of a new post or profession. It marks the death of one thing which gives way to the birth of another. The power of the raven can also bring you the very deepest form of healing, which is achieved through a process known as the resolution of the opposites. I kind of like that. Resolution of the opposites giving you the possibility of resolving conflicts that have long lain buried in your unconscious or perhaps your past. Okay, so that's the reason why the raven is looking to his left. He's helping us with the opportunity of resolving conflicts that have lain or buried in your unconscious or perhaps in your past. And maybe, maybe because of if you take that that possibility or to to to, to take the re resolution of opposites, right? And you and you do the healing around that, the forgiving around that, um, moving through it and learning what you're supposed to learn about that situation, gaining the wisdom from it, right? in lies the initiation because that is then no longer to be a block or an interference for you because you've you've done what you needed to do with it and so now you're making room for the next experience the new 
I like that. And I, I'm going to remember this, the, the, the resolution of the opposites. The resolution of the opposites. Does that does that um, mean about duality? You know, because part of the reason why we're on this this uh, spiritual journey here on Earth is to um, is to be able, be able to master that duality in whatever form, right? Um, to bring it to a, a field of or a realm of of un unification. The oneness, right? Is that even though there might be duality around us, that we that we carry that energy or that that frequency of unification, that we're balanced. Hmm. I feel like there's <laughs> hair. It's tickling. Okay. So that's what that's why the raven is looking to his left. Because we have an opportunity, an opportunity to resolve a conflict that may be buried in the unconscious or perhaps in your past. And we all have one of those, don't we? <laughs> At least one, maybe more than one. Um, <clears throat> there is a piece in here. Now, I didn't draw this in the reverse. This was not drawn in the reverse or given to me, I should say, in the reverse. But I think that it's good um, to read a bit about it, okay? Because it might help us to understand um, the meaning or the essence of the card at a deeper level. And so it says, drawing this card reversed may mean that we can now come to terms with our own destruction or destruct destructiveness, our own destructiveness, a, um, a rage that has perhaps been buried for years, knowing that we have the protection of the goddess Deeper still, it may mean that we can come to a resolution of the conflict of opposites, experiencing the reality that in darkness there is light and in light darkness. And so we can be balanced right in the middle of it. Yeah, not completely dark and not completely light, but right in the middle. And on the medicine wheel, that would be the center right? And that's where the creator resides, is in the center. And, you know, and I was taught that when um, the black road or the blue road, that is where we get our ex life experiences, our life lessons from the, from the east to the west, we're walking, right? When we, um, when we feel we just can't go on, <laughs> when we feel oh, not, a, not another one, right? You feel that fatigue in all your bodies is to head to the center, to go to the center where there is no duality. It's it's the creator energy. Some would call it the Christ consciousness, right? That unified field is to head there and to be balanced and so that you can have some respite. Yeah. And so whatever that means for you, you know, does that mean going out for a walk in the physical world? Um, does that mean going into meditation? Does that mean taking what I used to call a jammy day, which I don't get anymore, <laughs> but a jammy day where um, you have no appointments, you're not taking any telephone calls, you might be watching some movies, you might be reading some books that do absolutely nothing for your mind. Um, it's all about um, relaxation, right? Yeah, maybe taking a few naps during the day. Anything that brings you respite in a balanced way. For some people, it might actually be going to church, um, wherever that is for you, whatever organized religion. Um, for others, it might, like I said, mean going outside. Um, maybe for some, it might be going for to a sweat lodge, um, but to to go to head to that the center where the creator resides for that moment of peace, the moment of calm. Yeah, yeah. All right. I'm thinking. I'm thinking that um, the chat 
isn't quite working in the studio. Head to that, Oops, the shoot. Got to turn it down. Turn down the volume on my phone. All right. Mm, you might have dropped the feed, maybe. Okay. So for those that are in the, the live chat, um, did the feed drop for you? The, the video? Um, you know, did, did it freeze or did it kick you out or, cause it, it seems like there was, there was kind of, um, um, it felt quiet. It felt quiet. So I'm just checking. Um, when I checked my phone, it looks like, um, some people had to come back in that were here. No. Okay. Donna say no. All right. Okay. Well then we'll keep going. We'll keep rolling. So, um, so whatever that feels like to you, um, I thought it was um, important that we read at least that one sentence about had the card come in reverse, right? But there's some people who may be already in that place previously, right? Previously. All right. So here was a piece that, that kind of surprised me. I always like learning new things. Um, it says during Second World War, the Tower of London was bombed. The ravens, which had lived there for centuries, flew away. Winston Churchill, who had been initiated into a Druid order in 1908. I'm going to say that again. Winston Churchill, who had been initiated into a Druid order in 1908, immediately ordered their replacement with young ravens brought from North Wales and the wilds of the Northwest Scotland. Hmm. Yeah, you know, and, and uh, the raven sometimes gets kind of like a bad reputation, right? Because um, they're harbingers of, some say war, um, you know, they're uh, more, more of a negative kind of, um, presence in some cultures, not all. Um, in the Eastern Europe, or the 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 Eastern, we'll call it the European um, culture. Some of them would say that it brings fear of war, death, and destruction. And it says to understand Churchill's reason, we must turn the tale of Bron the Blessed, in which the superhuman Bron, whose name means Raven or crow, ask that his head be cut off and buried on the White Mount in London, um, facing the direction of France. As long as the head remained buried, it would protect the kingdom. The Tower of London was later raised on the site of the White Mount, and the totem power was transferred from the buried raven god's head to the presence of actual ravens in the tower to ensure the kingdom's safety. Hmm. And I have to tell you, oh, good, you guys, thank you for letting me know. Dawn says no, and Julie is saying, no, I'm good. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Okay, so when I read that piece, I was thinking about the movie um, Sherlock Holmes, the first the first one, right, with uh, um, Downey Jr., right? Um, and Jude Law. Who could forget Jude Law? <laughs> Um, and anyway, they were, um, of course, you know, they were, they were part of it was about a, um, I guess you could call it a, a mystical order. I don't, I wouldn't necessarily call it a druid order, but um, there was both um, England and uh, American actually involved with it, right? But there was this crow, or maybe it was a raven, that was, that was part of a, um, a lot of the scenes in that movie. Right. And um, and you think that it's it's, uh, you know, maybe um, bad medicine kind of situation. Right. But when I read this, I thought maybe maybe they were drawing on that their own culture, which I'm not I'm not aware of. Right. Um, that the, the raven was really a protector. It was showing that this this man is not what he seems, that um, that he's causing problems, he's causing death and destruction, right? That it wasn't the crow, but he was there and he was trying to do protection. And I thought, oh, that's another way of looking at that part of the movie. It's a part of the the um, English culture 
um, and the Druid culture that I wasn't aware of. And so as a movie goer, you know, when to bring that piece of information in makes that um, part of the movie seem different now, a different perspective. It was one another aha moment for me. <laughs> All right. So um, it says that this therapeutic association of the raven explains the occurrence of raven images at some of the Celtic healing sanctuaries and on Rom Romano Celtic iconography depicting beneficial divinities. The raven's connection with healing is reinforced when we consider it as a bird of prophecy and divination. Yeah, integral facets of the healer's art. The raven could travel to the darkest regions of the underworld to bring back visions and auricular instructions for the seeker and the healer. All right, so here we go. How many people in the live chat have either raven or crow as a power animal? Now, I know that I did some um, dowsing yesterday for Julie, Julie Shumway Hill, and found that um, raven was, um, or crow was one of her power animals. But it's interesting that um, that that would come up in this, and we would get this card today. We when we just talked about it yesterday, right? And um, yeah, there there's a part. I don't know. Hmm. Okay. Ay, ay, ay. All right, I don't want to make anybody motion sick. I'm going to have to move my camera. I have to show you something, okay? Now, I'm going to go slow because I know that some people get kind of, um, they're sensitive to that kind of movement. So um, I need to show you a um, spirit portrait that was done of me. Um, I think it was in like 2004, 2005. No, I guess it's 2005. All right, I'm going to go slow. Let's see if we can get it in the frame. All right, there we go. Uh, um, there's a little bit of a glare on it. And I don't know if you can see that, but in the lower, oops, the lower um, left hand corner near the, the energy swirl there. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna get up here. Hang on, let me see if I can get closer without losing the frame here. Sorry for the glare. Let's see if I go this way. How's the glare now? Um, in in the lower left hand corner, I don't know if you can see that. There's two eyes there. It's above the the gold ener energy swirl. Yeah. That drawing was done by Lisa Owen in 2005. Yeah. Um, that is um, that is one of the helpers that I have. Hello, <laughs> um, it's it's a power animal that comes with me or used to come with me, I should say, um, in in shamanic journey, in traveling in the dark. It was a raven, and um, yeah. So, you know, we're never alone. Never, ever are we alone. And especially when we do that kind of work. And so when I read this piece about Raven being able to go to the underworld to bring back information, I would, that that is what prompted the memory of um, one of my, my guides, one of my power animals um, that used to travel with me. Yeah. Yeah, he was kind of, and he was a protector too during that time frame. He really was. Um, we did a lot of work back then together. Taught me a lot. Um, <clears throat> all right. And so it says that the raven could travel to the darkest regions of the underworld and bring back visions and auricular instructions for the seeker and the healer. The raven has been seen as an oracle for thousands of years. 
The early Irish Druids divined according to their flight and cries, and as late as 1694, it was reported that a um, Herefordshire raven uttered a prophecy three times. So that, that number three, right, is very mystical to the Celtic, the Irish, the old Irish, um, and the Druids, it sounds like, right? It's a raven. Protector. And can help us, can help us um, if we, you know, take that opportunity to, to allow maybe an old conflict that we've pushed aside or repressed It's in our subconscious or in our unconscious. Sometime in, in the past, in this lifetime, that the, the raven medicine can help us to, to face that um, as a protector, but also as um, the energy of initiation. Because once we, once we resolve that, what's that phrase? is the the um, opposites i said i was never going to forget that here it is the resolution of opposites the resolution of opposites that if we take that opportunity um, and to call on the medicine of raven to help us with that um it's another another step in our soul growth and it seems to me it feels to me that it could be um, some major soul growth for some people. Yeah, that when we face that part of us, right, ourselves, you know, in that pathway in the background, right, up the hill, how many times have you heard the phrase, there's many paths up the mountain? And this is showing one path, one path up the mountain, and that's the Druid path. to a mountain, a mount that was now in modern day England where they built the Tower of London. It's interesting that, you know, that the river, right? Now, I'm not familiar with London at all or England. So what river could this be? If somebody could look that up, what river is that that flows near? Is that the Thames? T-H-A-M-E-S, Thames, could be. But, you know, just the water being there um, symbolizes emotion. And uh, a river, a river is flowing. It, it's, you know, if it were a lake, it would be like really deep emotions, right? A river can be deep but it's constantly moving constantly moving whereas a lake it there's some movement to it but it's not as fast as a river and so if you have some sort of conflict an emotional conflict that you've uh, repressed or suppressed um it's taking that opportunity with the raven and maybe that's why there is that drop of whatever that is on his tail because it looks like a water droplet to me that maybe he can help with even the smallest of emotional trauma conflict that you may feel is small but yet it has a lot of soul growth to it. Yeah. So what Raven brings to us today, right, is pretty, I think is, is pretty big medicine. Um, that we have an opportunity here that we can, we can actually embrace. Now, I know that if we repressed it, <laughs> And it's in our past in this lifetime. Chances are, um, chances are, we think it's a lot bigger than what it is, or what it could be. 
you know, and I really don't know of a whole lot of people who enjoy conflict. You know, there's some people who really like the drama around it and they'll stir it up to get the drama around it. But I don't know a whole lot of people who would do the actual direct, the direct uh, confrontation kind of thing. And it does it really even have to be a confrontation? Maybe not. Maybe not. Maybe it is um, actually having some sort of conversation with whoever that is about whatever it is that maybe it's so far in the past that um, that if you if we just sat down and talked about it that it would resolve because sometimes you know us two leggeds man we can make things so much complicated than what it really is just because um, we spin it you know we get <laughs> we get all tight about it in, in our mental mind, right? And um, we keep going over the same situation over and over and over in our minds until um, we we kind of blow it up out of proportion. Now, I'm not saying that it wasn't, um, there wasn't some emotion around it, right? Or trying to, trying to, to see who's right and who's wrong. Um, but more about what was that and what was I supposed to learn from that? Maybe it is having that conversation first with your spiritual team and actually calling on, on Raven and asking, you know, is that, is that the situation that we're, that I'm looking at and what was I supposed to learn from that or why was I supposed to learn from that? It could be helpful in, in resolving the opposites. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. I was just, you know, looking at the color of the crow, the, the raven and how dark it is, the black and, you know, that the artist did such a good job, right. In creating the contrast <laughs> In creating the contrast of the light and the dark. Huh. And the fact that the, the, the raven is, is sitting on a branch connected to the, to the earth, connected to grandmother. Right. So that, that's a good segue, isn't it? That's a good segue into asking who's grounded today and who did their, their protection. Hmm. Okay. Hmm. All right. Give that a, remember we have a little bit of a delay in the in in the studio. We got about a fifteen second delay. So whenever I ask something, I have to wait a little bit for you guys to reply. Um, <clears throat> but you know, it's um, who who remembered to do their their grounding um, and their protection today. You know, and if you're if you're an empath, if you're an empath, it's it's a good thing to do on a daily basis isn't it? To feel that, um, that no matter what kind of emotion or thoughts come your way, that you're, you're able to, to, to use your gift as an empath in a good way, right? Rather than being bowled over by it, <laughs> rather than being bowled over by it. All right. Julie said she did. Yay. Good for you, Julie. And Pat said um, she's grounded. Perfect. Perfect. Yep. And grounded, Julie says. Excellent. Now, if you haven't done it today, um, and, you know, this is just a gentle reminder. And, of course, you know, you have free will. You don't have to do it if you don't want to. Um, but, you know, it helps us to be more prepared for um, what the what the energy the day is bringing us, right? Yeah. So those shocking things isn't always as shocking as they could be. Yeah. 
And uh, Stephanie is saying, grounded and bubbled up, <laughs> have been saging Ben all day. Ah, he has been um, off all day. Ah, hmm. Well, okay. So I don't know how Ben reacts to essential oils, um, but you could do a, an essential oil on the bottom of his feet. On the bottom of his feet. Something's grounding or maybe um, something that would help with um, his uh, electrical circuitry. Yeah. His meridians. You know, I don't know what kind of brand you use of oils, um, Stephanie, but um, I know that both um, um, Young Living and uh, what's the other one? The other major one. They used to be a part of Young Living. Anyway, they have they have blends, um, and there's one for Valor, uh, Young Living, and I know that um, there's ones for grounding as well. But you know, if you if you use anything kind of um, like balsam or something like that, is a very grounding one too. Yeah, that it might help him. It might help him kind of be more more in his body. And more grounded to, to grandmother earth you know even if you look through um images of trees images of trees you know his 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 uh he's still he's still really young and so he can really use that imagination much more than adults can that's for sure <laughs> um yeah because you know for for the pain it, uh that my mom is dealing with lots of times you know we use uh, pan away which is a young living oil um on the bottom of her feet and that that really helps a lot because um there's something about the in the brain it's called the the pain membrane is that it um i could be getting that wrong but there's a membrane that um the a lot of the analgesics don't make it through um, but the essential oils do. And I think it's because it's much a, a more natural product. It is a natural product. And um, it's they take great deal of an effort to harvest and to make the blend keeping its integrity, right? Because they're using the blood of the plant. And my mom always holds the <laughs> holds the bottle and she asks the plant if um, if it could help her. So they're working together right yeah doTERRA that's it thank you Julie doTERRA um and I know that they have blends too I'm just not as familiar with their blends um as I am with Young Living so that's just a suggestion even if it's just plain lavender oil on the bottom of his feet be helpful yeah be helpful for you too <laughs> to put some on yourself right no matter what you use on him use on yourself too um yeah because you know we're, we're our, the children are so connected to 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 mom aren't they you know my mom used to say um that that the babies can feel what you're feeling so if you're feeling upset they're going to feel upset if you feel calm they'll be calm and i remember remember that and um, when I would uh, be with my my nieces when they were just toddlers and now they're all in their 40s um, When I would hold them, you know, I would think of really um, Beautiful places and calm peaceful Things, you know, and they would always calm down and, and a lot of times they'd fall asleep So they I ended up carrying the kids a lot <laughs> But I always took I took that to heart what my mom had said is that uh, the babies can feel it and now um, And I didn't realize that she was actually teaching me about my empathic ability um, And to be able to feel what the the the, the baby was feeling Understanding it allowing it to go through me, but to have um, my energy be calming right yeah, I, I didn't know that that's what she was doing all those years ago. I was only, what, 12 years old, maybe? 12, 13 years old. Yeah. <laughs> but I got to carry the kids a lot because of it. All right. So um, 
Raven is, I think, really bringing to us today an opportunity to look at a, something that we're holding in in our past, a conflict, or maybe the emotional, mental traumas for something that we've repressed or suppressed. Even though it may be a very small, we might think it's a very small something. That's what that little drop there is about that it does have a bigger impact, right? And that when we find that resolution and we can heal from it and gain whatever wisdom that it was from it, that uh, we feel lighter, we feel better, better. And, you know, it's no longer weighing us down. It's no longer an interference or a block. It's no longer that, that mental loop running in the back of our minds, um, taking energy from us, like siphoning energy. Mm -hmm. And that uh, Raven can actually help us with that and, and also with the protection around it as well. Yeah. So it's good medicine, Raven Medicine's bringing us today. At least I think it is. And I learned a lot from this one. I thought I knew Raven, um, but I only knew Raven from my cultural perspective, from what I've read and uh, what I've seen, what I've experienced. I didn't realize and didn't know about um, Raven from another cultural experience. And so um, being able to sense, feel, and see Raven from a wider perspective is a good thing, you know? Um, and it helps me to understand some bits of that of that movie too. <laughs> Sherlock Holmes is the first one. So anything and everything that we chatted about today about Raven or anything else, you know, if it resonated with you, I, you know, I encourage you to, to embrace it and then watch, see, sense, or feel how today's energy is unfolding around you and where this information is possibly helpful to you, right? Whether it's a direct um, participation or if you're a witness to it, because either is good, either is good. We're learning something in either case. But if it didn't resonate with you, don't worry about it. It's okay. You can just let it lie, right? It wasn't for you today. And there's nothing wrong with that. Nothing. In fact, you know, um, you're not going to hurt my feelings or anyone else's feelings for saying, you know, that just didn't resonate with me. It's like, okay, it's fine. Don't worry about it. Keep moving. <laughs> Keep moving forward. Maybe tomorrow's information will resonate with you. So, um, what's coming up this week in Star Nations? Um, we have some really great shows for you coming up. Um, Polly Jo will be back from vacation. And um, so Chakra Sessions at noon on Tuesday will be a live show. And she is talking about intimacy and our chakras. So that should be a good one. That's at noon Eastern time. And then we'll have the daily live stream that we're doing um, every afternoon at 3 p.m. to uh, 3 p.m. Eastern to Central. And then Tuesday night is um, my weekly show, Communications from Home at 8 p.m. Eastern. And we're going to be chatting about um, the backstory of the February issue of Star Nations magazine. Yeah, going to share a few things with you. And then on Wednesday at 7 p.m. Eastern is... Um, soul connections with Polly Jo LeBay. Yeah. So that's a, that's an evening of healing. If you haven't done your own self care or healing your own emotional um, or mental traumas because you're helping so many other people, um, Wednesday night is for you. Um, it's an opportunity to take um, your intention for whatever it is that you want to heal and call in your own spiritual team where Polly Jo and her team will hold that, that, um, sacred space for us. And they also help our team and us to release or heal whatever it is that we're, we're healing or releasing. And then Polly Joe does um, individual card draws 
um, and do doing a mini reading. So if that interests you, um, you can join us and you can ask for a card. Yes, please. <laughs> Yes, please. All right. And then Thursday, yay, Thursday, we have a brand new show starting here on Star Nation's radio network, the live stream shows. It is Life Wisdom with Ed Langan. Now, Ed was my guest last week, Tuesday. And so if you joined us there, you, you were introduced to him and you get to meet him. Now, Thursday is his premiere show at 4 p.m. Eastern can't wait can't wait he is talking about relationships he's going to be doing some tapping around self-love but he's also sharing his personal story on his journey and uh, his spiritual journey and when he woke up to his gifts yeah it's a good story um and he's also going to be doing some channeling work okay so if you have a question and he says any kind of question um, that you can contact him um, with your question by February 12th. I think it's the 12th. I think that's what he said. Um, and we also have the link where you can send your question. And he likes to have it early so that he can sit with the question a bit and uh, be prepared um, with his guides um, to make the reply to you um, on the live stream. Okay. It's going to be a good one. So, um, yeah. And enjoy enjoy the rest of your sunday uh whatever it is you're doing and uh, we'll see you back here tomorrow afternoon at 3 p.m eastern for the daily live stream okay all right bama mina that's potawatomi for until we meet again i love you guys <laughs>